Let me start today's episode with a question. Remember, today is Myth Monday. That's gonna make some people a little uncomfortable. What if, if you are doing everything right, you're not overweight, and doctor says you still have insulin resistance? Because here's the truth, most people never hear. I diagnose insulin resistance every single day in people who look completely normal on the outside. Some even look fit. And that's exactly why this myth is so dangerous because it blinds people who think, well, I'm not overweight, I'm safe. Meanwhile, their liver is filling with fat their fasting insulin is quietly rising and their metabolic health is crumbling underneath a perfect looking lab situation. Today, I'm going to walk you through exactly how a thin person becomes insulin resistant, the exact lab patterns that reveal it, the internal physiology most doctors miss, and the real world steps to reverse it before it becomes a disease. So stay with me because by the end of this video, you may rethink everything you thought you knew about metabolic health. So how this myth became so popular? Well, let's start with the origin of the myth because knowing where it comes from really helps you see how deeply flawed it is for the last 40 years the medical system has been obsessed with the weight as the primary marker of metabolic health bmi charts weight categories obesity risk all of that right and because most people who get diagnosed with type 2 diabetes are overweight the story became only overweight people get insulin resistance but that's just a correlation not causation. It is a pattern, not a rule. And it is a terrible, terrible screening tool. And here's the important thing. There is an entire population of people who do not gain visible weight, but internally their metabolic system is under extreme stress because of the visceral fat. These are the people who like fall through the cracks, right? You don't, you, you just think that they're fine. And they are the exact people who get blindsided with conditions like fatty liver, PCOS, high blood pressure, sudden diabetes despite like you know looking great looking healthy and then boom you're diabetic or boom you have fatty liver now we will talk about the thin on the outside and fat in the inside so let me introduce you a term that absolutely changes people's perception of metabolic health it's called TOFI. TOFI stands for thin outside fat inside a new <laughs> fun term for you this is not a cute label but this is clinically validated metabolic phenotype. Here's where toffee actually means. So you have normal BMI and on the outside you have low visible body fat. You look skinny. But in the inside you have high visceral fat, high liver fat, and you actually have low muscle mass, like skinny skinny, right? And you might have high dancing insulin, high triglycerides maybe, high post-meal glucose spikes. You wouldn't know unless you really wore a continuous glucose monitoring system. Now, these are the people who look healthy. These are the people everyone envies. And these are the exact people who often have the most silent metabolic dysfunction because they go under the radar. They think they're fine and they, they don't go see doctors. Or if they see doctors, doctors will think, oh, you're fine, we don't need to run any tests, you look good, right? Well, because visceral fat doesn't sit under the skin, so you cannot really grab it. You cannot see it in the mirror either. So you cannot detect it by stepping on a scale, but your pancreas can feel it because that fat is wrapped around your pancreas, your liver. Your liver will feel it for sure. And your insulin receptors can definitely feel it. And this is where the myth breaks apart. Now here's the science. How thin people end up with insulin resistance, right? How, how does it even happen? Now I want to take you inside that actual physiology because once you understand these mechanisms, the whole myth collapses instantly. Now mechanism number one is genetic fat storage patterns. Now some people are genetically wired to store fat internally, not externally. Their body tucks fat around organs like the liver and the pancreas and the in intestines instead of storing it under the skin. This is very common actually in South Asians and Middle Eastern populations and East Asians and even Hispanic populations. Now these patients often develop diabetes at BMIs that look normal on the paper. Mechanism number two, 
fat deliver is hidden, right? It's not a big person problem. Up to 40% of normal weight people have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and it is one of the fastest ways to develop insulin resistance. If you are seeing elevated AST ALT in your blood, suspect that. Look into that. Because once the liver becomes insulin resistant, the pancreas has to pump out extra insulin to keep that glucose stable. Okay. Now, mechanism number three is the low muscle mass. So you can be thin and under-muscled and muscle is the number one glucose disposal system. Less muscle means less storage space for glucose, which means insulin has to rise higher to compensate, which means insulin resistance creeps in sinolin. Mechanism number four is chronic stress. Now, thin people aren't magically protected from stress, right? And cortisol-driven glucose elevation is a major reason thin people develop metabolic dysfunction. And here's what happens. Increased liver glucose dumping, increased visceral fat accumulation with the stress, and reduced insulin sensitivity and also disrupted sleep pattern will also worsen the insulin resistance because of stress stress doesn't care about your weight it does mechanism number five high glycemic diet plenty of thin people live on what lattes granola bars cereals toast right like smoothies they go drink every day and juices whatever juice they want to drink crackers all the junk food now you think that what's what's up with these people? They eat whatever they want and they still look thin. Well, these foods still spikes their insulin very aggressively. Being thin does nothing to stop the physiological impact. Mechanism number six, inflammation and sleep problems, right? So two nights of poor sleep will make a normal person insulin resistance like, like this immediately. Two decades of poor sleep will make a thin person diabetic. The body does not care about looks. It cares about metabolic signals and thin people are exposed to the same harmful signals. And here are some labs thin people fail and don't even realize. This will shock you because thin patients usually assume their labs are fine. And here are the labs that actually reveal the truth. Number one, fasting insulin. The number one earlier or earliest marker almost of metabolic disease is fasting insulin, even if glucose is normal. And number two is triglycerides. A thin person with a triglyceride over 100 is almost always insulin resistant. And ALT, like the liver enzymes, like I said earlier. So normal weight fed the liver is way more common than you think. And number four is post-meal glucose. Many people, or thin people, have massive spikes after meals. They just never measure them and they never see it. Now there's a measurement called HOMA IR, one of the most unrealized markers, right? We do that, we test this, for example, in our patients and fasting glucose trend, not the number, the, the trend. A thin person whose fasting glucose creeps from 81 to 92, then 98, then 103 in a year, you know that insulin resistance is developing, right? And here's some real world signs for you of the insulin resistance in thin people. They usually present and they come to my office and they say they have afternoon crashes, they have extreme carb cravings, they have brain fog, they have belly bloating, they have anxiety, fatigue out of proportion, and they have this sense of feeling shaky, even without carbs, and mild high blood pressure as well. So most people say, oh, my blood pressure is fine. It's like 135 over 85. That's not fine. If it is over 110 over 70, actually there's a problem. Now elevated triglycerides, like we discussed, and they typically have difficulty gaining muscle. These are metabolic clues, and they tell the story long before the A1C does. Now, let's talk about how these thin people will reverse their insulin resistance, right? Here are some high value steps. Number one, build muscle. The number one intervention, right? Thin people must prioritize muscle. Oh, even if they're having a hard time building that muscle, they have. Hypertrophy training is a metabolic medicine. Number two, fix the breakfast. Thin insulin resistant patients respond incredibly well to protein, fiber, healthy fats, slow carbs in the morning, even beans will help them. Eggs will help them greatly. Greek yogurt, for example. If you can, I mean, get used to the taste and the consistency, chia seed pudding is great as well. Now, number three, we're going to remove health halo foods, right? So here are the most common thin person insulin resistance triggers. Honey, fruit smoothies, granola, oatmeal, cereal, low-fat yogurt, and protein bars. Now, let's talk about circadian eating. Cut off 
eating three hours before bed 100 percent. and we're gonna do some stress condition we're gonna have short daily practices you need to do breath work cold exposure morning sunlight slow resistance exercise and obviously targeted botanicals as you know we have you know a supplement company we love herbs it's sugarmds.com that you can find all sorts of high quality supplements and herbs botanicals have multi-pathway effects for example gymnema reduces glucose absorption and the cravings bitter melon and for example supports glp1 physiology so for, for example indian blackberry supports pancreatic function fenugreek right it's great it slows the carb digestion and neem for example supports insulin sensitivity all of these herbs that i'm talking about is actually found in our sugar md glucosion and advanced glucose support now these things support thin patients by lowering their post meal loads the glucose or glycemic load and reducing their insulin demand so yes Thin people can have and will have insulin resistance. In fact, some of the sickest metabolic patients are the ones who look healthy. If anything, the absence of visible weight gain makes the problem far more dangerous because they never get warned, they never get screened, they never get told the truth until the damage is already done. And if that shook you, wait until next Monday's Myth Monday. It is even worse and almost nobody sees it coming. So I'll see you next Monday in this episode.